Hello, this is the Eye Maker store. It's two and a half thousand square foot of um, 3D printing store, first of its kind in the UK, the first of its kind in London. It's the largest one in Europe, and there's an amazing selection of kit here. But not only that, um, Sylvian, uh, who set this up, is here. Sam Cervantes uh, from Solidoodle is here. There are a lot of people who are moving and shaking the 3D printing world who are here today. Um, and a massive queue outside. Uh, I tried videoing it, but the sunlight today was so bright that it just looked mushy. Um, but check it out, as you can see, there's the media area over there, that's quiet, but this part, the printer part, is mopped. This is a machine that meets the needs of the majority of people. Yeah. They had printed Look at the resolution on that, that's really good. Look. Okay, so that's a thousand pounds, that's the up mini. Okay, behind me we've got the Up Plus, which is £1,500 worth of printer, and it doesn't look like the sexiest one here, but it's got incredibly fine resolution. So it's actually, you know, extremely, um, you know, effective for getting smooth, fast prototypes done. It's a very fast printer as well. Apparently the word is here that this is actually like the, the engineer's choice um, for small engineering firms. It's nice. It's nice just to get close to them and to see them in the flesh. You know, these are home intended devices. Still expensive now, but nevertheless, for rapid prototyping, uh, for the sort of work that I do, that would be awesome. But I'm, I'm not going to get one because it's 1,500 quid. And here is the art uh, working. There's one on the other side of the room working. Check it out. Now, I don't know if that's showing up on the, the camera, but that is really, really fine work. It's building an architectural model, uh, and it's absolutely um, fabulous detail on that. Smooth, too. I'm really, really impressed. There's a big queue behind me. So, see this sort of inflatable wall? In there, we've got uh, a 3D scanner. People being 3D scanned, and then you can be 3D printed as well. They'll give you the model, you can print your own, or you can get it printed out here. That's pretty cool. Uh, I won't be doing it though because I don't think they've got that much plastic. Thank you. Down here you will recognize the MakerBot Replicator 2, very much the rock star of the home 3D printing world. This is the 2 version, so it runs with PLA, which doesn't run as hot as um, uh, ABS, so it doesn't have to use as much energy. Uh, it's very, very stable. It's got various built-in sort of stabilization routines, and of course, the PLA, they're still working on the recycling side with Philobot. That is going to be happening. It's just amazing to see in the flesh. One of the, the nice things about the store, I think, is the fact that there's lots of 3D printed stuff for sale here. Um, none of mine yet, but I'm hopefully going to go and see them about that at some point. Um, and it's mostly plastic work. Most of it is... Um, why, thank you very much. Look. Awesome. It's mostly um, ABS or PLA filament derived stuff. Um, some of it's very smooth, very nicely finished. Some of it's obviously been through a sort of acetone process processing uh, sort of, you know, bath to smooth out the set lines and stuff like that. Okay, so if you uh, know all about 3D printing, then this won't impress you, but it impresses me. Look at that. Fully articulated. I'm going to ask this gentleman to demo it. Friend, can you just move that around? Now look at this. It's fully articulated, printed in situ, ball bearings. It's a, it's a sort of cross between a thrust bearing and uh, uh, just a traditional um, engine bearing, but you know, produced in ABS. The resolution, as you can see, is pretty good. Bit of work maybe on the modeling there to get some of the faces off the torus that they've used to actually construct that. But all in all, that's uh, very impressive. Right, this. This is a leapfrog printer. And as you can see down there, it can do two colors at once. So that's a dual extruder working there. Um, so we've got dual ABS feeding into it. Uh, I think it's ABS, I'm just looking at the thing. And yeah, I think it can use either ABS or PLA. Um, and it's doing a lovely job actually. And you can see down there, The value in a, a dual extruder is, of course, you can run two different colors at the same time. The resolution on that's pretty good, but again, it's 1,500 quid, so time to start saving up. Let's get another look.
Thank you, Raphael. That is awesome. Here's Raphael. He's the dude. He's keeping everyone well oiled here. Sorry, say hi. Hey, thank you so much. That, sorry, isn't that terrible? Um, I'm not drunk. Yet. Back to the printing. You know, one of the things that's really um, got me excited about the Solid Doodle machine, I thought I'd be saying that on camera, is this. Check it out. It's nearly finished printing its model. It started, what, about 40 minutes ago, half an hour, 40 minutes, and it's nearly completed. It's an incredibly fast machine, and you know, at the £300 price point, I have to say, that's probably the one that a lot of the visitors here are going to be going for, because, you know, it's still an emerging technology, things will upgrade and grow very, very quickly, and if you just look at the finish on that, that's, that's pretty impressive. I mean, certainly, um, just give that a little bit of acetone finishing, uh, do some work on it, and you've got a very, very high quality finish. You know, I'm not sure if... Um, the comparison between this and something that's ten times the price, uh, like the, uh, the cube over there, um, is really going to make a huge difference if you're prototyping and working out machine parts and that kind of thing. So I think the Solid Doodle for me is the winner in terms of its sheer um, versatility and speed of operation. That is massively cool. It might not be fast enough. And also, it's very cheap, and cheap is good, because you don't want to spend a whole lot of cash on something that could be out of date quite quickly. <sighs> Cheers. Mm, okay, you caught me. Um, check this out, this is awesome. Of course, as soon as I start filming it, the damn thing stops printing. Hold on a second. No, I've, 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 I've made it go shy. Um, okay, so this is a Cubex printer. Just over £3,000. Um, oh, look at this. I mean, that is lovely work. That's a really nice finish. It's a very fine finish, actually. It's a, obviously a triple extruder, this one. So you can see we're getting three colours in one model. Oh, wait, it's back. What you can see happening here is that it's actually melting some plastic onto the head, which is then going to come along and use to uh, wow. That is a remarkable, sorry, pardon me, remarkable piece of equipment. Are the results as good as some of the other printers here? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Are they £2,000 better? I'm not sure. £1,500 better? Mm, maybe. You know, really impressive piece of kit there. Um, need more wine. So that was the eye maker store. We got here when the sun was bright and blinding. It is now night time. We had a few hours in there. We looked at loads of machines. Uh, we met some really interesting people. And, you know, I think it's a, it's, it's a real insight into where 3D printing is going at the largest store in the world. It's still actually quite small. I mean, it's only two and a half thousand square feet. But, nevertheless, you know, it's still a, a landmark. And, of course, what we've got in there are really remarkable devices, which are geared up... Not so much for smoothly finished home production yet. We're a few years away, I think, from that being a reality. But for rapid prototyping um, and, and, you know, testing out concepts um, in the flesh, there's nothing like it that can move faster um, or be more cost effective. Uh, so, you know, well, unless you're good with your hands and you've got a, a chisel and a lump of wood uh, and what you want to make can be produced with a chisel and a lump of wood, uh, apart from that, there's no cheaper way or faster, more effective way to do it. Um, and that was great. And the people there were fantastic. It was very interesting. Now, I did try very hard to get an interview with Sylvain Newmont, uh, who um, is the man who set the whole thing up. But he was mobbed with people. And even when he wasn't mobbed with people, uh, I kind of got the vibe that he was interviewed out, certainly, for a small 
bearded blogger like myself. However, I spoke to Adeline, his assistant, and she promised me that if I get in touch with them, they will arrange an interview for me at a later date. So keep watching the blog. There is an interview with Sylvain Yvon, founder of the iMaker Store, coming up soon. And until then, I will say peace.